Welcome to Code with Kurt. In this video, we're going to have a little fun here. I'm going to show you how I created a multiple choice trivia questions. And it'll automatically keep asking you questions. It's multiple choice, and you just answer accordingly. And it'll tell you if you're right or wrong. Also, I set it up for multiple categories that you could choose from listed here. So we'll just go ahead and I'll demonstrate which team won the 2014-15 NBA champions. I'm going to guess. Down here it says try again. So I'm going to say Golden State Warriors. And I was correct. And I moved on to the next question. Which NBA player won the most valuable player 2000 season? I'm going to say Kobe Bryant. No. Paul Pierce. No. Shaquille Neal. Correct. And it moves on to the next question. I call an API called Open Trivia Database. And I use the API call over here. And what I'm basically doing is number of questions I'm doing one. And it already showed me the the link to get that one question. But I also do I do any difficulty. I copied all these categories in so I can I was able to select this on my run. Uh, the type I use multiple choice and I do the default encoding and then I get this API call and this is what I use to generate the data for my trivia questions. And again and I'm using the categories from this sheet. I copied all those categories are here to form my list here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a step-by-step -step process of how I put this together. Remember to subscribe to see future videos like this one. So let's get started. Okay, I'm currently on a new Google Sheet. I'm going to give it a name. I'll call it Trivia. And I'm going to name my sheets down here. I'm going to do the complete layout of what this is. And then I'm going to copy in the script. And I'll just go through the script. And then we'll tie the script into the screen and have a final product. So I'm going to do the layout first. So I'm going to get my sheets name. Trivia. If you're uh, copying along here. Uh, it is important to get the sheet names right because I call them very directly to the name in my script. So I got trivia and category. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy in all my categories in. So I have them copied. I'm just going to go ahead and paste them in. Now it's important to get the number right to the category because this is what I actually use in the URL to call the API. So if you can just get a quick look at this and all the numbers and all the names. Again, it the number is the most important thing. I mean, you can change the name of a little bit of this if you want to make it more sense of these categories, but it just has to tie to the number of this. So this category sheet is done. So we're going to go back over to trivia. And next I'm going to merge a lot of these cells together to get my question. So I'm going to hit the merge key here. The next I'm going to set checkboxes in here. I'm going to find my checkbox. I'm going to hit that. So there I have all my checkboxes put in place. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a data validation on my categories over here from the list of this category sheet. We go to data validation. We're going list from a range. I click this. I'm going to go over to category and select all these. Hit OK and save. I go back over here. I should have my drop down of my list. I could start with just any category. Um, the next, I'll just do some fonts here to kind of make things a little bigger. So 
So uh, we got our layout set now. And what I want to do next, I'm just going to tell you that we're going to hide this B column because underneath here is where we're going to put the correct answer in this column here. But I'm going to keep it open here just to show you how I populate it. And that's how I know which answer is correct. And I can flash up the card here that says if that's correct or incorrect. So next we're going to move on to our script. So I'm going to go to Tools. I'm going to go to Script Editor. I'm going to name the project. Hit OK. Next I'm going to copy in all the script functions. So now I copied it. I'm going to come to the top and I'm going to hit Save. Next I'm going to go through each function. So the first function we have here is to get random integer and basically what we're using this for is to randomize our answers when we display them on the screen so we don't always display the correct answer in the same spot and I'll kind of demonstrate that later on here and the next one is we got the decode HTML entities when the question comes back even the answers too they come in with these HTML entities and we're gonna decode them into the actual character itself. So it'll visually look like a real question without all these weird symbols and numbers within the question or answer. So just a little work here to get the display to look correct from the API call. So that's basically what this function does. It just kind of goes through each one of these, looks at the text that I'm sending it through and then corrects it, puts this true character in. So then the next function is our get question. This is when we actually retrieve the question and kind of display the answer. So the first thing I'm doing here is declaring the spreadsheet object and I'm getting my two sheets, the trivia sheet and the category sheet objects. The next thing I'm doing is getting the category value from over here in this I1 so we know which kind of question to, what type of trivia question to ask. So I'm getting that. I'm clearing out the questions and answers. Next I'm getting the last row of the category sheet. What we're going to do is go through the category sheet and get this ID so I can use that to call the URL. So we're doing that here. We're going through each row looking for the category and then grabbing the category ID. So we have that information. Next we're setting our URL. If the category ID equals any, which is the first one, then we're just calling any specific category, any category. If we do have a category ID other than any, we're going to attach the category ID to the URL. The next thing we're doing is calling our API. We're doing the fetch here with our URL string, the URL. We're getting the response. We're converting it into a JSON format and then we're turning it into this data object so we can work with it. Uh, we're setting up two arrays here, an answer array and a number question array. And the first one we're going to go through is the answer array. Um, but the next we're going to do is we're going to go through the data and I'll kind of show you what the data looks like. I'm going to pull up my postman here. And here we're calling just a random question with any category. So here is the response back. I'm getting my results which is in array format. And the three things I'm really looking at is the question, the correct answer, and the three incorrect answers. And you can see these special characters in here and that's why I'm doing that function call to correct some of these. So I have to store all this in and then kind of display these answers back out in random order. So let's go back to our script. So here I'm getting the results length which was my array and then within that 
I'm getting cutting it down just to the results and then from there I'm getting the question and the correct answer so those are the first two things I'm getting the question the correct answer next I'll be doing is going through the incorrect answers through this array so I have this set up incorrect answers length I'm kinda going through each one and pushing it to my answers and so I got all my answers pushed in here for my incorrect and the same thing I did up here is I, I pushed my correct answer into answers so I should have all four within this array but you can see and note this is I push always push the correct answer into the first slot of the array which is the zero key because I'll be retrieving that down below here so below here this is I'm doing a do do while loop here and I'm using my get random integer function which is at the top and I'm looking for a number 0 through 3 when I put four numbers here it's giving me 0 1 2 3 are the three numbers I'm expecting uh, this is just a log statement this is for debugging purposes this really is not even needed for this so I can cross that out the next thing I'm doing is once I get my value I'm checking it if I have it in this array number question array which is the second array I setting up here if it isn't in which would be a negative one then I am I'm going to the first position of where the answers are displayed which is right here uh, C5 but this is just 5 plus position I got 0 here and then uh, I'm going to 3 which is C I'm bringing out whatever random number I got I'm going through the array and getting that answer out setting that value and then that's a font of 16 and bold from there I'm getting my random number I'm pushing it to my number question array and then the next thing I'm doing is if the value equals zero that means if it's going to be the first one in my answers array which again is the correct answer because I'm always pushing that the first then I'm going to add a correct into the second column which would be here so whatever the correct answer if it's zero I'm going to put the correct right here and this is used to tell when someone answers that I know if it's the correct answer or not so then my position goes to the next position and then I got my while as long as the number question array length is less than four so I don't I haven't found all my four numbers so then it goes through again grabs another another number if it's in the array it goes through again and gets another number because we can't duplicate the numbers we need the exact positions to make sure we call every spot of the answer so yeah it might go through here four times it might go through here a hundred times but eventually it finds all four numbers and positions them out in a, in a randomized order and that was the whole point so the next call here, once it's done getting all the questions and answers out, we're actually doing a merge from A1 to G4 right here. Maybe we didn't have to do that in the beginning. This is how we have it set up in the code. It's doing a, a wrap, so it's doing the wrap as well, so it doesn't go off the screen. And then I'm setting the question in on that box with a font size of 16 in bold. So that is how we display our question. But we have this on checkbox trigger. And from here I'm grabbing the range, the source. That all comes back from these on edit trigger functions. And I will have a tag above here that shows you how to work one of these on edit trigger functions in more detail. But here I'm just going to kind of go over this on a high level but these are the outputs on these edits you can get the range the source from here I'm getting the spreadsheet name I'm getting the column 
the row and the input value of this trigger. And the trigger is set up on this sheet. But what I'm specifically looking for is anything clicked A through A5 through A8 on these checkboxes. So then I'm going through and I'm looking. Again, this is a log statement, so this is for debugging. But I'll just keep it in there. I'm getting my spreadsheet object. I'm getting the sheet name trivia sheet. What I'm looking for is the search column is 1, row 5, 6, 7, or 8. Either one of those. Like I pointed out, uh, the value can't be nothing. So the it's either going to return a true or false. Or true, it's going to be returning true or false on those checkboxes. And the spreadsheet name is trivia. So we're looking very specific area for the, the trigger. And if we do have that click, then what we're going to do is we're going to right away set the checkbox to false. So we're going to uncheck the checkbox. And then from there, we're going to get the answer just right of the checkbox. So we're going to look at B5 or B6 or B7 or B8, depending on what is checked. If that answer is correct, and remember we set that correct here, if it equals correct, then we're going to bring up the thing on the side that says correct, and then we're going to get the next question. If it's wrong, we're going to say try again, and then we're going to mark that spot, that checkbox in red. So then you get another chance to answer it, and then it goes through this trigger again. If it's correct, then it goes correct, and that's how you get your next question. So from here, we have to set up this trigger here. So we're going to go to View. Actually, we're going to go to Edit. We're going to go to Current Project Triggers. And from here, we're going to add a trigger. So we're going to get our function, and we're going to do on checkbox. We're going to leave that as head. We're going to do from spreadsheet. From select event type, we're going to do on edit. And then we're going to scroll to the bottom and hit save. And we're going to go through an authorization. We can click our name, advanced. We go to trivia and then allow to edit, create, and delete our sheet. And we hit allow. So now we have our trigger listed below. We can go back here to trivia. And I think everything is pretty much set up. Uh, to get this thing going, is we're going to have to run this get question from here. So we go ahead and run it. So we're going to go ahead and get our question. We go back over here. And now we have everything populated. And we got any category. So what song originally performed by the Bee Gees in 1970? I had a cover version by the Steps 20 years later. Well, right here we can tell it says correct. This is where we marked our correct answer for this one. But how we can cover this up we simply hit B column, right click, and hit hide column. So now we can't see it anymore. So now when we click it, we should get our, our trigger to fire. It says correct. And next we get our next question with our answers. So that concludes this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it below the video. Until next time.